All right, welcome back everybody. In this video, we are going to determine the project duration and critical path of this project that we are given the table of dependencies for. So the process here, we're gonna do a rough draft over here, make sure we don't have any unnecessary crossovers. We'll redraw it all nice and pretty uh, and with space to put some more information on our nodes. And then we'll do a forward pass and a backward pass to get the early start, late start, uh, and all of that good stuff. Then we can find uh, the critical path and also the whole project duration. So uh, first things first, let's do a rough draft here. We know that activity A is the first activity in the project because it has no predecessor, so we'll go ahead and draw that. Activities B and C both depend on A. So we can write activity B and activity C. Next up, we have activity D. This depends on B. So we have activity B. Uh, well, no, that's not right. Um, activity D. Can, carried away here. Now activities E and F both depend on activity C. So both of these guys are kind of come off of C. We have E and we have F. Next up we have activity G. This depends on D and E so we're going to need some arrows coming off both of these guys leading into activity G. And lastly we have activity H here uh, and that depends on activities F and G. So we're going to have H there and F is going to lead into it, and so is G. And there we go, this looks right. We have no unnecessary crossovers, so we don't have to redo it uh, or shift anything around. Um, now, all we need to do is we'll just redraw it with our typical nodes here that we've been using. Again, in case you forget the convention that I'm going by, we have, uh, in this square, we have activity, we have the duration, and then we have early start, early finish and then late start and late finish. So we'll just draw the diagram right here. And now what we want to do is just complete our forward pass to find the early start, early finish. And then once we have that, uh, we'll do our backwards pass to find the late finishes and the late starts. So starting with activity A, we start at zero. Start the beginning of day one is zero, whereas the end of day one would be one, right? So we start at zero. Activity A, its duration is three days, so we have zero plus three. So early finish is three. Then remember if uh, what we do is we bring the late or the early finish into the early start of these activities. So we just bring the three up because they can't start until this guy's done. So again, now we just have three plus four is seven. Three plus two is five. And you can really go in any order that you want here, just as long as you make sure you're bringing over the right number. So we're gonna bring seven into this guy, and seven plus five is 12. Now we can't fill in this yet because there's two different arrows coming in and we'll have to pick the larger value. So we have five here, we're gonna bring the five up. We have five plus one is six. And obviously the 12 here will win, right? Because G depends on E and D. It can't start until E and D are both done. And while E finishes on the end of day 6 here, and D finishes on the end of day 12, so obviously we have to wait till the end of day 12 before we can start G. So we bring in the, the 12 here, add 4, and we'll get 16. Now again, we have to wait. Uh, we're not sure what we can put here yet because there's two arrows coming in. So we have to go all the way back to here. So we had the early finish on C. We're going to bring that to the early start on F. That's a 5. 5 plus 2 is 7, and what are we going to bring here? We have a 7 or we have a 16. Well, the 16 obviously wins because H depends on G and F, and obviously we can't start it on day 7, or at the end of day 7, or beginning of day 8, I suppose, uh, because uh, we, we, need, we need to wait for G to finish, and it's expected to finish here on the end of day 16. So we're going to bring that 16 in, and we'll have 16 plus 3 is 19. So right away, we know that the duration of the project, the planned duration of this project, is 19 days. Uh, now we want to find out what the critical path is, so we're going to have to do the backwards pass. And how we do that, if you recall, we're going to bring this 19 down, right, the 19 here. And similar but different, uh, instead of adding the duration, we're going to be subtracting the duration as we go back. So we have 19 minus 3, we get 16. Now we can bring the 16 into this spot. We can also bring it into this spot because there's no competing arrows coming in. So first of all, we'll start up here. 16 minus 4, we have 12. And again, we can bring this 12 to here because there's only one arrow leading in. We can bring this 12 down here because there's only one arrow. 12 minus 1 is 11. And up here, we had 12 minus 5 is 7. Again, you can jump around as much as you like here. 
Uh, down here, we actually we forgot to finish this guy. We have the 16 minus 2. Uh, we'll get 14 here. All right. Now, leading into C, we're not sure what we can put here, right? Because there's two numbers we could put. It's either the 11 or the 14. And remember, with the backwards pass, we do the opposite of the forwards pass. So we bring the smaller number of the two. It wins. So we bring this 11 into here because 11 is smaller than 14. Up here, we only have one one arrow leading out of B, so we only have this number that's a possibility, so we bring the 7 in, 7 minus 4 is 3. Uh, now we can't go here yet because C has to be done, so we have 11 minus 2 is 9. And then again, what we want to find out for, what to put for the late finish for A, well we take the smaller of all of the competing uh, values here, so we can either put 3 or we could put 9, so we're going to put 3. Uh, and 3 minus 3 is 0. And now to identify the critical path, if you recall from the previous video, all we have to do is figure out which activities have their early finish and late finish being the same. So we have activity A here, the early finish and late finish are both 3. Activity B, the early finish and late finish are both 7. For D, they're both 12. G, they're both 16. And H, they're both 19. So A, B, D, G, H would form a critical path, and here I'll just outline it in red just to kind of hit the idea home. So there you go. Our critical path is A, B, D, G, H. And if we delayed any one of these activities by any amount of time, even if it was just one day, uh, the entire duration of the project would actually increase by a day. Whereas if you look down at maybe C, E, or F, um, we can actually delay some of these guys for actually quite a long time. Uh, for example, if we started activity E, if we delayed it by one day, that wouldn't affect anything because according to its late start and late finish, it's allowed to start at least or at the latest on day 11 and finish on day 12 before it would start affecting the end date of our project. Um, and that brings up the, the concept of float or slack. Uh, we have total float, total slack or free float and free slack, uh, both uh, float and slack is the same thing. And we will be talking about that in the coming videos.